Welcome to the Interpreting Wine Hospitality Podcast. I am, of course, your host and podcast founder, Lawrence Francis. Welcoming you to this, my London Mezcal Week series. The series features brand ambassadors, authors, bar owners and producers and is the most comprehensive coverage I've ever given to a drinks category. And I think given the important time we're at in the evolution of Mezcal, covers lots of the issues as well as lots of the great taste to be found within. So here we go, today's episode of the London Mezcal Week series. Today's episode of the London Mezcal Week special features Roman Jove of Del Maguey Single Village Mezcal. We of course hear his origin story and transition into working with Del Maguey before taking a deep dive into the brand and its range. Finishing up with a tasting of the Del Maguey Single Village Mezcal. Enjoy. So my name is uh, Romain Liobé. I'm a French guy uh, working for Del Maguey Mezcal. Uh, I've been working for Del Maguey Single Village Mezcal since four years and a half now. And uh, I manage the European markets uh, mainly and a few other countries. Um, I got into Mezcal nine years ago when the first bottle of Darmagé uh, hit the f- France, the, the French uh, uh, land, and uh, it was really surprising because I didn't know anything about Mezcal. Never heard this word in my life. Working as a bartender, it was like something nobody really asked, and. Um, I've seen a review about Darmagé talking about the Pechuga mezcal with a chicken in the Alambic and I was super cur- curious. So I ordered a bottle and um, when we received the bottle, we actually drank the full bottle in one night with some customers because we really loved it. And it's when all this started. So I've been bartending for many years and I got the opportunity to work with Darmagé uh, through a friend and met all the family, uh, uh, Ron Cooper, the founder, and... Michael, one of the business manager, and Steve Olson, who's an incredible teacher. So, uh, and Maggie Geek is is amazing. So, yeah, it's it's an amazing world. We never stop learning. So, here is a bottle of Dar Maggie Single Village Mezcal. So, that's a very important thing to say. Uh, at Dar Maggie, uh, we are 25 years, almost 25 years old. It's been created by uh, this uh, visionary artist Ron Cooper. Uh, and he went few few times in Oaxaca in the 80s and completely fell in love with Oaxaca and the people, the art, and his beautiful art, liquid art. And um, his mission by creating Darmage was to showcase the difference of terroir, the maker, the plants. And uh, we have in front of us San Luis del Rio, it's one of the two first villages uh, Ron started to work with in 1985. Uh, the label was a bit different. It was a picture of uh, uh, the son of Passiano, the producer of this mezcal, with a little, don- little donkey and some uh, maggie on top of the donkey. And the labels changed in, uh, I think, in 1998, something like this. And uh, this label being designed by a good friend of Ron Cooper. His name is Ken Price. Uh, beautiful artist, uh, you should check it out. So on each bottle of Damage, you can see uh, obviously the name of the village. Uh, on the side, you have, of course, something that we really, really want to share with people: sip it, don't shoot it, right? So it needs to be sipped, enjoyed with your friends, for everything bad, mezcal, and to celebrate uh, as well, you know. So. Uh, on the back label, you have a little story explaining how it came to this village, uh, as well a description of the spirit, how it tastes, uh, the specificity of each mezcal. Uh, so actually, we're going to try a little bit of this beautiful 100% Espadin. It's an uh, Angustifolia family. It's um, probably the most common plant used and cultivated in whole Oaxaca. Uh, so it's... Some people say, well, that's the entry agave, but to be honest, it's a beautiful plant. And you can have really, really amazing espadine mezcal, even cultivated. So 
Adam Agui, we, we want to share uh, the tradition and the culture. So before starting to drink, we always uh, follow the rules as in the village. So I'm, an, I'm the juez for Adam Agui, so I'm the judge. Mm-hmm. So in the village, the people are the juez who pour the mezcal for everybody. And everybody wait until everybody serves. And the juez put a few drops on the floor and they all say it's TG Bay. So it's TG Bay. This mezcal is very smooth. It's 47% uh, ABV, uh, super long, round. Um, yeah, it's uh, a slightly smoky, but not too much. But I'm not the very good reference because now I completely forget the smokiness. Now in mezcal, sometimes it's oh, it's very smoky. I say, oh, maybe a little bit. But uh, so I'm not the right one to say that. But I don't really uh, bring tasty notes. Uh, it's very personal. Everybody has his own uh, expression. What's really cool at Damage, we have uh, 20, 21 expressions available. Uh, so we are lucky now to represent the category. We have different types of uh, uh, maguey or agave. Uh, we can showcase different types of uh, terroir. So we started with four vi- main villages uh, to showcase the difference from one plant uh, with all the different terroir, different villages, different producers. So each time it's one family, one village. Mm. So right now Damage works with uh, 14 families in 14 different villages. And uh, yeah, pretty much what we are. Uh, to be honest, like everybody can find his mezcal uh, in the Damage range. And I got to say, you know, I'm I'm really the same. I, I don't like to give a, a a long list of aromas and and and, and tastes. Um, but that being said, you know, I think it's I think I like to try and describe what I'm what I'm kind of tasting. I, think, I mean, first of all, it's super. Super enjoyable, and I'm glad that you drew attention to the the sip it, don't shoot it, because you know this is the this is the sort of liquid that it would be a travesty to shoot it, because you're obviously then you're not getting it, getting the real sense of this. So you know you heard the man, don't <laughs> sip it, don't shoot it. Um, but there, I mean, there's there's like so much complexity here. I mean, I am you know taking the taking the time to to smell, and and there, there's there's almost um, there's almost like a sort of a sweet character the, the the first character that kind of leapt off the nose to me was almost like a sort of a a chocolatey almost aroma but it, it i think it's sort of almost more floral or it's almost almost something more natural i want to say than necessarily um, um chocolate or something sort of um you know pre- produced or uh, sort of um bakery sort of uh, notes but the the smoothness i think is is the is the key thing that i that i'm um, noticing here you know i think with some spirits when you do sip them you know as we are no ice no water just straight up you can be hit by somewhere on your palate somewhere on the tongue somewhere in the after um taste there's going to be some harsh note there's going to be some kind of jarring element i'm not getting anything like that here at all it's just it's smooth in smooth out you know and and, and out in the sense of the the finish because you're right i, I mean i'm not a regular mezcal drinker, so I am noticing the, the 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 smokiness. I would say, but but even even the smokiness seems to have a depth to it. It's 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 almost, it's almost like not. It's not like a. That's the word. That's the word. It's totally integrated, in it, and it's and it's almost like a. You know, making up words, but it's almost like a natural smoke. It's just, it's just like a a real deep smokiness that almost like it it's it's something that's taken time to develop it's this is, doesn't feel like it's got any flavors at all that are that are sort of quick and and pass through the the you, your senses quickly the, these these are lingering flavors but but it's just super the full process of production. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. it's it's part of the full process of production it's the 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 way they cook it slowly for mo- around 5 to 6 days here in this village uh they wait a little bit that the plants cool down so the the smokiness from this underground roast kind of integrate the plants and then they uh, crush it with the molino with the horsepower molino and uh, yeah from natural fermentation so it works a lot with the terroir uh, at Amagi everything is all natural fermentation no water added and yeah small distillation it's 300 liters alambic and when you see the alambic it's not the fancy ones you can see in in Scotland, for example, it's like very primer alambic, so 
simple device, but they made this beautiful spirit out of it. Right? It's, it's really amazing. So you can be really amazed by that. As you can tell, I'm loving it. It's really, you know, a, an, an artisanal spirit. This is this is something that you know I can imagine has just been, you know, been made with a lot of love and a lot of care, and no corners have been cut. Basically, I would say in this in this you, you can you can taste it. And what I would say, yeah, kind of final question, really. Um, you know, given that a lot of my listeners are wine drinkers, um, you know, I'm a lot of sommeliers, a lot of people that work in hospitality as well. I'm just thinking, yeah, maybe, you know, what would you sort of say to somebody who, you know, likes wine, you know, enjoys the enjoys the sort of wine flavors and, you know, you're a you're a Frenchman as well, you know, with the, with a sort of long <laughs> long culture of a uh, of wine appreciation. I'm just curious, yeah, what what would you what would you kind of pick out, I guess, in in this bottle or in this brand or in this category that you think might be the hook to that person that you know, likes wine and, and likes those flavors and, and maybe is curious about mezcal but hasn't sort of, hasn't taken the first step yet. Well, you know what's amazing about mezcal? You have different types of plants. So as you have different types of grapes, uh, you have different terroirs, as you have different terroir. And each terroir and the grapes together for wines is going to give a very specific, like, final product that you're going to love. So if you want a beautiful as as dry, like more like on vegetal notes, you can go to Karwinski's, for example. Yeah. Uh, all this agave, like all cliches and everything. And if you want something like more uh, on the Burgundy side, I would say, well, maybe you can go to this Tobala. And Tobala is probably like the romantic county of this beautiful mezcal. Like this very small plant to take probably 20 years to arrive to maturity who make this beautiful, elegant uh, mezcal. So, yeah, you can find uh, your type of wine, but for mezcal, and it's, it's what it is. It was called Vino de Mezcal, it was agave wine, to be honest. So they have this understanding of the plants. So, yeah, you can you can find your own. Obviously, lots of tastings, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Well, this is it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roman. It was an absolute pleasure sitting down and tasting with you. Great to see the bottles, hear the story, and taste the liquid. If you've liked what you heard, do be sure to check out Del Maguey's website and main social media handles below. And while you're at it, why not hop over to interpretingwine.com slash listen to find out more about the podcast and, of course, to subscribe. Next time in this London Mezcal Week special... I sit down with Agave Ambassador Gabby Moncada. See you then.